Welcome back to NBA Cinema. So today we got to talk about Ant Edwards and some of his comments regarding Shea Gilgis Alexander and the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I want to analyze those two teams because they're on the up and up and they see each other, you know, it's being in the way. OKC hitting a stride, I believe they third in the West now. You got Minnesota's being first in the West pretty much most of the season. And, you know, Anthony Edwards and Shea, naturally, those competitive young men, they guard each other. And we've heard Ant-Man talk about the calls that Shea gets. And we're going to take a look, before I continue, at the way these two young studs defend each other. Let's peek. Turnovers. But how about Shea tonight? The pass back to Ant. How about that? That's oh. I mean, that is such a flop. That wasn't even with the good angle either. Now, on that play, you see a bit of a flop from Shea Gilgis Alexander, but uh, I just want to show these guys are competitive and they are checking each other every chance they get. Now, Ant Man feels like Shea gets more calls than he does. And a lot of times you see the more powerful athlete just because they can play through certain contact or they finish above the rim, they're highly explosive. Certain things may go if they just power through it. You see that with Shaq. You've seen that with LeBron his whole career. You have people saying, you know, they get all the calls, but they probably don't get a third or a fourth of the calls that they probably should get. And Ant-Man has been very vocal about how the officials officiate Shea Gilgis. Let's check it out. It's hard to, man, with the calls that Shea gets. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to shut him down. You can't touch him at any time of the game, so... It's super hard to beat that team. It's a good team, especially when you get calls like that. So, you know, it's hard. But contributions all around, a team effort. And tonight it was the battle amongst the best in the West. You guys take sole position of number one in the West. How did you get it done in this environment? I don't know. I don't know. And I'm going to take the fine because the refs did not give us no calls tonight. We had to play through every bump, every grab. I don't know. I don't know how we won tonight. Uh, big shout out to my team. Big shout out to my coaches for sure. So Anthony Edwards didn't miss his words. He said exactly how he feels. I feel like Shea is a creative offensive player, and a lot of times that it gets to the line, it's valid. He's one of one offensively with some of the things that he can do, just some of his agility, dexterity, the way he can move his body and change direction and – how flexible he is is just you know you you think you got to block on Shea you think you about to stop him and he does something just totally out the norm and you end up fouling him so I do understand that now on the clip that I show where Anthony Edwards checking him I think he's talking about that type of stuff where you chest up guard him cut off his path and it's a foul because Ant is the bigger stronger athlete and this NBA again is set up for the rules uh, to to benefit the offensive player, and and is like no is is set up to kind of benefit great offensive players who aren't as strong because they can snap their neck back and get to the foul line. That that's how he's feeling about it. And I showed a video the other day where Adam Silver was talking to Kevin Garnett about why they changed the rules the way they did. Um, and it, and it is, you know, he said it's for the fans, you know, for the offensive portion of the game to be highlighted more. You don't want some big, strong guy being able to stop a skilled player who isn't as strong. And I think that's ridiculous. I think that's a part of the process of becoming the player um, that you should be. And I think they thought that this would cut down on injuries. But you see a lot of non-contact injuries with the pace of the game now. So... That's another thing to keep in mind, too. As far as the teams, I think it will be a good matchup. I think the Minnesota Timberwolves bringing in Rudy Gobert has helped take some of that pressure off of Cat, you know, as far as being a presence. Let Rudy Gobert have that interior presence responsibility and let Cat go play the four, be versatile, keep the floor spread, uh, and, and worry about offense and grabbing some boards and – you know, helping helping on the defensive end, but don't leave that to him. I think the OKC Thunder can benefit from grabbing someone like a Steven Adams if he's healthy, a Clint Capella, if that's possible. If they decide to blow that team up in Atlanta, they need to grab a strong man to put beside Chet. You know, 
San Antonio started the year out with Wimby and Zach Collins just to have a stronger man beside him. Now Wimby starts at center, but that team won't be playing into the playoffs. I'm looking at Chet, and I'm looking at a seven-game series. If you see what Jalen Duran did to him the other night and pushed him wherever he wanted to under the basket, around the basket, you see exactly why I'm saying what I'm saying. Because uh, they're going to be playing in the playoffs, man, and you don't want Chet to have those type of injuries just because he physically can't handle guys. I think he is a presence now. Every time you go into the paint, you can feel Chet Holmgren around the rim, and you have to think once, twice, you know, before going up. But I do think, like, for instance, you remember when he got injured with LeBron going to the basket. Now, he's a little bit stronger than he was in that pickup game but those type of things can injure him and if he's just taking those blows repeatedly i don't know in a seven game series if he'll be able to go if you face a team that has a bruiser or has a stronger player like that so i think that would be the maturation for for the okc thunder it looked like they put some weight on Jalen williams and had him guard the fours but i feel like you know he's a three I feel like either Dort or Giddy, at some point, there may have have to be a decision made about who to keep in that lineup because you're, you're going to need a stronger player to play beside Chet while he continues to fill his body out. You shouldn't put all of that on him, you know, to be the physical presence in the paint. Like, he's a presence as far as blocking shots and stuff, but people are going to try him, and they're, and they're going to go – you know, to the rim and get into his body. And, you know, Chet's good going up vertically and not swiping down, you know, on on the offensive player. But how much do you want to try your luck with that? So that, that would be questions I would pose to both teams. But hopefully we get this matchup in the playoffs. I think Ant-Man and Shea Gilgis is just what the NBA need. Both guys feel like they're up next. Shea, very nice guard, nice handles, nice offensive game. Ant-Man has that next-level athleticism that the NBA covets for the face of the NBA-type players. So we're going to be – and he's starting to draw um, comparisons to Michael Jordan. So we're going to be looking to see what level he actually reaches because it will be good for the game if he reaches his maximum potential, man. So let me know what you guys think about this button rivalry in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Till next time, peace.